You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is not and, as um, simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. You, you feel this, this nervousness on the phone there? Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. Well, I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You gotta make some phone calls. Hang up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Packernet After Dark. This is the call in show of the Packernet Podcast Network. If you'd like to participate, the call in number is 608 501 0718. That number again is 608 501 0718. Please uh, get your calls in. Call about whatever you want, man. Call about anything you need. If you want to call and just vent, do it. If you want to call in and tell me that your life is great, do it. You got a recipe for some sweet pizza, please tell me, because Jersey Mike sent me pizza dough from New York, and I want some great uh, ideas. Obviously, we're going Classico, right? I'm going to get a little basil, you know, a little, 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 little matzo. Do it up that way. He also sent me a recipe for a white pie, which looks good, so we're going to go that route, but... Um, I got 10 does, so we got to we gotta do it up for reals. You don't have to do that. That's fine. I'm, I'm just giving you ideas. Do whatever you want. Do what feels natural. Speaking of Jersey Mike, by the way, for context, we're Tuesday, 551. We're still not quite to the announcement yet. Um, after this, we get into Wednesday, but there's a lot of early Wednesday calls, so I don't know how close we're going to get to calls that are actually post-announcement, but hopefully we get there today. Hey, it's Jersey Mike. So, hey. uh, obviously, so far, well, yeah, I, I, at this point in the voicemails, I, I would say, uh, Roger still has yet to uh, say anything about what he's going to do, even mm-hmm. though the Packers have made it very clear that he, we don't want him, even yeah. though, you know, the uh, Jets have now signed Alan Lazard. Um, and, and it's funny, I'm seeing tweets on Twitter, you know, Aaron Rodgers is, is doing three things. He uh he's the GM of the Jets, he's the quarterback of the Packers, <laughs> and he's the owner of the Bears. Um, I love it. I, I I hate this man. I I actually hate this man. And to think of the, the fact that he might be holding the Jets hostage over, oh, you better sign all my friends, or I'm not gonna I'm not gonna accept the trade. Uh, what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Rogers, please, dear God, before midnight, just. Just do it. Just, just say you say yes. The Jets will be my daddy. Just do it. <laughs> get on, get on, boy. Get. Nobody wants you. Uh, and for the Packers fans that say you do want him, stop, stop lying to yourself. You're just, you're just holding on to the the abuser. You know you've been abused, and, and you've always, you know, you're holding on to the beginning of the relationship when everything was great, but he he's been abusing you, and and you're just holding on there, like they break the cycle. It's, it's okay. We're here to help. We're here to help. <laughs> anyway, go back, go. Yeah, so obviously the Rogers has painted a very different picture for us than what the media has been telling us has been going on. What the reality is, I don't know. I'm hoping that we get some more perspectives on this moving forward. Ian Rappaport, I saw, came out and was like, I don't know, dude, I'm just reporting what I'm told. So he hasn't apparently gone back maybe he did and they were like yeah we were lying to you and then he was kind of hurt and didn't say anything i don't know i'm hoping again to get a little bit more closure on why there was that massive disconnect but i will say this as upset as people might be about how rogers is acting that guy has done nothing but shoot the value of his trade through the roof the fact that he came out and said i'm going to the jets the fact that everybody's speculating how good the jets are going to be now that aaron rodgers is there and everybody's acting that it's a done deal everybody's already talking about it you know jets fans are already doing backflips about about all this stuff um you've already signed hackett you've already signed lazard you've already gone through all the hoops everything is a done freaking deal man rodgers basically came out and said i'm a jet 
it's done. I mean, they're, they're, that, uh, he, he did us such a massive favor. It's like, well, he's saying that he, it wasn't a list of demands. Well, I, I wish it was. I really do. I, I wish the truth was he went over there and said, I want all of these players, and then all of them get signed. And as a result, we get an additional first-round pick. I wish Rodgers would do that. In fact, today, I hope he's texting him being like, you know what? Actually, I want Tunyon too. I hope that that happens. I'm not going to be. Why would I be mad at that? I hope that that happens. I want him to put the screws to the Jets so that they just feel so unbelievably stuck that there's no possible way they could back out. I wish, you know what I want? Apparently, I saw somewhere, I don't remember where it was, Rodgers is scheduled, I think, next week to go out to New York, New Jersey, whatever. I hope it's a public appearance, not a hidden one. I want him to go hit the streets. I want there to be people lining the streets, like when Trump went and visited that place that uh, exploded with toxins and stuff, and everybody was like lining the streets with flags and banners and everything else. I want Rodgers to do that. I want to see like news media of him just going to visit a town and it's just like Rogers banners and like a Rogers parade and everybody's just screaming from their way. Hey, Rogers, you know, like a, from these apartment complexes, you know, just like the, uh, the uh, discount double check. Hey, Rogers, people are coming out with like roses. It's like a scene from, uh, from the Godfather. They're coming out and, and like kneeling on the ground and kissing his, his ring. He's got a wicked ring now for people to kiss. Saw that on Pat McAfee. I need him to do that. Go to New York. Speak to the people. Politic. Right? Make it a whole thing with Secret Service. You know, they got the glasses they're looking around. I don't care if they're real or fake or whatever. It doesn't matter. I doubt he's going to get shot out there. Maybe. Who knows? Probably not going to be from a rooftop or anything. So it's a pretty... Relatively easy Secret Service thing, aside from the part with the guy with a gun shooting at you. But, you know, if you're willing to stand in front of Rogers when he gets shot at, then you did your job. Anyways, that's irrelevant. If he does that, we get an additional first round pick. Like, it's just done. Like, we're just add another player. Gutekunst will be on the phone like, yeah, just throw uh, throw a whitehead in that deal. I know, I know I said forget it, we'll just scratch it. Never mind, put him back in the deal. And they're going to say, damn it, fine. Fine, fine, I get it, I know, I can't, we can't, can we just, can you please send me the paperwork so I can sign this thing, please? I hope it's not done, so that next week when they do the parade, we get another pick. That's what I want. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Goosey. Just finding myself with a couple extra minutes on my morning commute. I'm stuck behind the plow. Yeah. Winter, gotta love it. I'm listening to After Dark and listening to people talk about pizza. Yeah, man the merits of different styles and I have to agree I don't think that there's one style that is the best they just are all enjoyable in their own way which is the great thing about pizza isn't it <laughs> remember my uh well, I don't know it's after dark but the bottom line is my dad told me one time pizza's like something else even when it's bad it's good but um you could probably fill in the blanks. But pizza's just good, man. You know what I mean? Like, good pizza is just good. Even bad pizza's like, dude, it's still pizza. Like, freezer pizza, like, this sucks, but I'll eat the whole thing for sure. It's not a problem. <laughs> but, like, really good Chicago-style pizza. It doesn't have to be deep dish. I'm just talking, like, a, a real Chicago-style, the way they make it pizza. Real good New York pizza. Real good freaking California pizza. Well, real good California cheese pizza. I don't know what they do as far as putting plants on it and stuff. Everything is like fish and plants and vegetables and pineapple and fresh fruits. and ugh. I get it, man. You make great smoothies, but pizza doesn't need to be a smoothie, okay? I'm just saying. But anyways, it doesn't matter what part of the country you're in. Good pizza is good pizza. I'm sure if you go to Italy, freaking dominant pizza. It might not be your favorite. It's all different. Everybody's got their own personal preferences, but it's all good. Same with barbecue. You know, we nitpick about, like, what style is the best style. It's kind of stupid, dude. It's just delicious food. It's like, um, I, when I grew up eating ribs, it was always fall off the bone, right? And, and when you go to somewhere in Chicago, and, you know, I'm sure there's Chicago places that don't do this, but generally it's you boil the crap out of the ribs, you slather them in sauce, 
They literally just fall off the bone right into your mouth. Sometimes they're boiled so long the bones come off, which is pretty gross. That's a little much for me. But that's what I'm used to. Now, if you talk to like real barbecue people, that's bad. It's overcooked. You shouldn't do that. There needs to be, you should see like your teeth imprints in the, but listen, that's not how I like it. Now, I'm not complaining. You give me some legit, you know, ribs where it doesn't just fall off the bone. It's it kind of sticks to the bone a little bit. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to love the crap out of it. But if I'm making my own ribs and I'm making them the way that I like them, you can grab the top of the rib and pull the entire thing off. You know what I mean? Like you go to the top of the bone where that piece of rib is and you just pull back and the whole thing comes off and then you just kind of got a hunk of meat. That's what I like. And guess what? I'm not wrong. It's just what I like. It's something just about everybody can come together on. Pizza. It's just good, man. And especially what, uh, I forgot who was saying it, was saying about New York, New Jersey, is the best part about it is there's a million places that do pizza and they all have their little spin on it. Yeah. And some of them are so good. Yeah. And you just got to decide what kind of pizza you want that day. And I think that's probably one of the truths about New York as far as pizza. Even if the style isn't your favorite style, the fact that pizza is just what we do means that you know that they've perfected it, right? It's kind of like if you go to Memphis, they do barbecue real well. Even if Memphis isn't your favorite style, it's just what they do, man. It's what they do. There's 75 different places that you can get barbecue. So there's every different kind of style you can think of, every different kind of sauce and this and that and everything. So there's going to be the style that you like, and they just, they freaking perfect it there because the competition is so fierce. Whereas if you want to open a barbecue joint in Madison, Wisconsin, for example, you've got like three competitors and, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, no disrespect to Madisonites and myself included, we're not exactly barbecue connoisseurs up here. You get us like decent barbecue and we're like, dang, never had something like this before because we don't live in Memphis. So that's probably true about New York. It's just what they do. And it just always immaculate. Yeah. So where I grew up, which is in upstate New York, uh, actually what they call central New York, there's a pizza place called Those Skinnies, and they make Sicilian-style pizza. Yeah. And it's not because I have a Sicilian background that I feel this is the best pizza out there. It is actually a place they, they freeze their pizza and will ship it around the world, I'm pretty sure. At least they used to do that. Because it's so good, people will order it and have it shipped to them. But you got to try Sicilian-style pizza. Yes. The sauce is on top of the cheese. Okay. I know you might not like that. Yeah, but Chicago does the same thing. It's a little bit of a different sauce, but it is amazing. It, every time that I get to go home, I have to have those skinnies. i got to have it. It's There's a couple other places locally that did it too that were pretty good, but that was the best. So try yourself some Sicilian style pizza. I encourage everyone to go out and try all the pizza places and find the best ones. I agree. Keep them in business because if everything turns into Domino's and Pizza Hut, I'm going to cry, especially with how bad the pizza is here. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's why uh, what's his name from Barstool has the best life uh, imaginable. He goes around and tries every kind of pizza in the world, or at least in the country. Maybe the world. I have no idea what he does. Now, I will be honest. I didn't realize that that was Sicilian style as far as the sauce on top. Um, maybe I'm thinking of something. What am I thinking of? What is it where it's just a, a, a normal like cheese pizza, but it's sauce, and then like the blotches of cheese on top, like fresh mozzarella, with the basil and a little bit of oil. I thought that was Sicilian, but I must be... Th- what am I thinking of? By the way, when I Google Sicilian-style pizza, all I'm seeing is Detroit-style. So now I'm super confused. It's like the square, thick... It all looks terrible. What did you say? Dos Canis? I gotta look that up. Is it this Oscunizzo? Is that what you're saying? King of Pizza, Oscunizzo Pizzeria in Utica? Utica. Utica. So yeah, I see what you're saying. It's got, uh, so they do have square, but they also have the uh, normal pie shape. And I see it's cheese. It looks like cheese with sauce over the top. Um, Looks good, man. Looks real good. I like the look of the place too. It's just got that kind of old school, like it's in a little shopping mall. Uh, Got the wood paneling. 
Just got the old school, like, um, school chairs, you know, like the ones that are attached to a desk, but obviously these are not attached to a desk. I like it. I bet that's real good pizza right there. But what the heck am I thinking? There's a place in Madison. Let me find it. I know exactly where it is, too. Oh, come on, your website's not working, you jagoffs. Oh, it's a margarita pizza. That's what it is. Not margarita like the drink. It's mag. What is it? Margarita or margarita? There's a slight difference in there. I don't know, but it's not. Uh, it has nothing to do with the drink. It has to do with some queen or princess or something from back in the day. But yeah, margarita pizza is what I was. That's what I was thinking of this whole time. Uh, by the way, I made one of those once. Completely botched the dough. Dough sucked, and my family still thought it was because I made like the fresh sauce. I don't even think I put like fresh mozzarella on. Like I, I butchered it. And it was still like, dang, dude, this is, there's something here. Makes you realize if you like do this right, dang, this could be good. But that's what I've been thinking of is margarita pizza. I think it's margarita as opposed to margarita or something. I don't know. I don't know. Something. Scuba Steve saved me, man. Get me out of here. Hey, Ryan. This oh. is Jim, first time caller. <laughs> and I think Aaron Rodgers needs to leave. Get what you get for Aaron Rodgers and give Jordan Love a chance. Aaron Rodgers is done. He needs to get out of there and quit messing around. Green Bay is done with Aaron Rodgers. Ah, just kidding. This is Scuba Steve. Hey, it's How Scuba you Steve. Doing, Ryan? I'm good. How are you? Hope you're having a great time with oh, all yeah. the Packers stuff. And, um, yeah, do you agree? I think Aaron Rodgers, we need to get what we can get for Aaron yeah, Rodgers. Man. And um, give Jordan Love a chance. He's been waiting. It's his turn. So, all right. Let me know if you agree. All right, man. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. I love Scuba Steve, man. I just, I don't know about you. If you're sitting there in your car smiling right now, dude, it just makes me smile. You know, he's a happy guy. He's funny too. I don't know if he tries to be and he's just a comedic genius or if he's just kind of a weird dude. That makes me laugh. I don't know. I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. I like Scuba Steve. See what Omar's up to. And yes, I agree. What's going on? It's Omar Firefighter. How y'all doing? What's up, man? I'm driving to work on this cold day or cold morning, and I'm tired and fatigued, not because of lack of sleep, mm -hmm. because this daggone trade has not officially happened yet. Right. Of what, Wednesday? Yep. Whatever it is. 5.50 a.m. Although we get 13, 14, 15, I don't know. 15, cool. I ended on the right one. Uh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, I was... I watched the whole thing on Pat McAfee show thinking Rodgers was going to pop up. I know sometimes they, you know, they announce them, but I thought it was going to be like a breaking news. Yeah. I got our buddy Aaron Rodgers on that this like, it's some bull. Like how y'all have a trade, like come out that you got a trade and then come out that, no, they don't have a deal done. Like what, what is like, why, this is almost, this is actually about to be worse than the Brett Favre thing. He said he wasn't going to do this. And he's taking longer to make a decision than he did last year. It doesn't make any sense right. at all. It's like, dude, they're doing everything you want. They're signing all your best friends to contracts, which, to be honest with you, that's pretty dope that he has that much. Like, he's like the general manager of the Jets already, and he hasn't even signed with the team yet. Right. Like, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. So... I'm like, just do hurry up and train. Like, make the drum official so we can move on with our day. Like, yeah, I know, I get it's it. It's ridiculous. I'm here or stuff. He might actually. Re and and look, I know a lot of people are like, just relax. It's none of your business. He can do what he wants when he wants. And I get that. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Like, it's it shouldn't impact my day, but it does, man. Maybe it shouldn't. Maybe we're stupid. Um, I think that's a part of being a fan. I think I do think some people are being a little ridiculous. Like, why should it matter? Why do you care? Are you serious? You're a Packer fan, you're trying to pretend that this doesn't matter to you? Come on. Like, I get that some people are getting carried away, but at the same time, trying to pretend like this is, this has no bearing on your life, that's just nonsense. But, um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be honest, man. It was it was starting to really weigh kind of heavy on me. Uh, I was having a hard time doing the podcast, partly because I didn't know what to talk about, but it was like I felt freaking dizzy, <laughs> exhausted. Like, I, I just... I just did not want to do it. And and I'll be honest, now that the news is out, I, I feel kind of invigorated. Um, and I feel bad about that because I hope it's not because Rodgers is leaving. I think it's just because there's clarity now. There's a little bit of a clearer picture, like Jordan Love is our quarterback, Aaron Rodgers is going to the Jets, and we got to figure out what the compensation is, right? Now, we may be in this cycle all over again. I think reports are this deal should get done pretty soon. 
I don't know. Reports go up and down and left and right. Then you hear reports that we're going to get a lot of compensation. Next time you hear we're not getting a lot of compensation. So I have no idea. You know, one minute it's players, the next minute there's no players. So um, we may, I may end up getting kind of bogged down again. If this thing drags out to the draft or whatever, I probably will end up getting stressed and, and I don't want to say depressed, but maybe a little bit. So I'm just saying I get what you're saying, and I get what everybody's saying. And maybe we are stupid and demented and, and should get a life or something. I don't know. But that's the part of being a diehard Packer fan. This is a part of your life, and it does matter to you, and it does weigh on you. And it's freaking heavy. And the best I can tell you, Omar, is you're going to get a little clarity in a couple hours here. I and I'm like, how the hell? I'd be mad as hell if I was just did that. But anyway, that's not our problem. But hopefully, like I said, we get some form. But I'm just tired. This is This is... This is getting to be a joke. Yeah. Uh, like, he, he's not trying to, it hasn't happened yet. I don't know what they're trying to work out, but it's, it's getting ridiculous. Uh, anyway, on the other note, uh, definitely let us know if you watch the Daredevil show, Disney Plus, or the Punisher show, which is connected, Daredevil's first. But if you, you know, want to go right to Punisher, you can't even go on. Yeah. But let us know what you think about that show, that recommendation that I have for you. I'm, I guarantee you again that you will love it. Just straight action, realistic. All right. Talk to you later, Bob. No, I, I haven't. And I, I just keep forgetting. About, what? <laughs> Me or you or what? <laughs> Phones are tricky. No, I, I actually, I asked my daughter about it. She's real big into Marvel. She, um, I think she kind of heard about the Punisher thing, but. Um, I, I don't think that's actually Marvel, but it's kind of up her alley. But um, no, I definitely need to, to get on that because that does sound pretty dope. I just forgot. And um, I actually just the other day, I haven't been doing a ton of, because there's so much stuff going on. I haven't done a ton of TV or movies or whatever, but I had on, uh, it was like a Netflix, I think, original movie or whatever. It had, uh, uh, what is that guy's name? Il- Ildris Ilba, Ilba Ildris something, whatever, the guy that was uh, horrible in the office, but pretty great actor and super dope voice. But anyways, it was out in the UK. It was about a serial killer or whatnot. It was kind of crazy. It wasn't, it wasn't a great movie. If you're bored and looking for something to do, it's a time filler, but it was fine. It's pretty dark, but, but no, I need to, I need to get on that. I keep forget. That's the thing. I keep like, what should I watch? And I'm like, what did everybody recommend? I don't know. I know the boys, but I just, I don't know if I can do that. And it's like, I don't know. Plus there's the whole login issue. I got Netflix up, but everything else is I got a lot of excuses, man. All right, just leave me alone, Omar. Okay, I'm trying. I'm doing my best here. I'm trying to do two podcasts. I got a family. I'm trying to figure out how to make pizza. That doesn't suck. And I got to watch Daredevil. All right, I'm working on it. Give me a break here. Dang it. All right, so I don't know what was going on Wednesday super early, but I've I've never had so many people call within such a... I, I guess people are going to work. I don't know, but 5 o'clock, 548, 548. Now it's 550. We got another call at 6.30, 6.50, 7.20, 7.29, 7.45, 8 o'clock. We already talked to Uncle Rico at 8.59. Like it's, I feel like, hey, it's Wednesday. We're about to get the announcement. It's like everybody's calling. I think everybody's just super ticked off about all the news that came out and had to vent on their way to work. But anyways, let's keep this train rolling. Hey, Ryan, this is John, first-time caller. Hey, John. Um, yeah, Aaron Rodgers needs to stay at Green Bay Packer. <laughs> okay. He started a Packer. Yep. He's always been a Packer. Yep. He needs to retire a Packer. I get it. Um, Jordan Love's not there yet. He still needs to learn. Let Aaron Rodgers be the face of Green Bay. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's good with Steve. Oh, it's good with uh, Steve. Yeah. Well, you got me. I think that Aaron Rodgers, that he needs to retire a Green Bay Packer. Yep. Um, how awesome is that? Not many people stay with a the team their whole career anymore. Let him stay a Packer and retire a Packer. I don't think Jordan Love's up to it yet. So just let, um, you know, let Aaron Rodgers stay there. Keep him there. There's only a few more pieces Green Bay needs around Aaron Rodgers. And, boom, they're right back there. So, all right. I wonder if you agree. Yep. Thanks, Ryan. Bye. Thanks, Scuba Steve. Um no, I, I don't. Uh, I, I guess I'm just not as much of a romantic about it. Um, I don't think any of, you know, I, I don't know if you saw the video JJ did on Twitter, but I would encourage you to go check it out. It's it's ridiculous and silly because it's a whole skit with the office and like, I don't want to say Photoshop, but, you know, people's faces over other people's, you know, David Bakht- Angela is David Bakhtiari. It's kind of ridiculous. But 
it's a little bit of a tearjerker. And it kind of got me a little bit in my feelings. A little bit about it, you know? Remembering all that stuff, remembering all the good times that we had, etc. By the way, I was singing that song all day yesterday, JJ, you freaking jerk. I could not get it out of my head. I think I was annoying my family to death singing that song. Um, but anyways, um, but, I, but none of that goes away. Whether or not he retires a Packer or goes to the Jets, I, I don't think it tarn it. Now, you know, we'll see what happens. If he goes over there and gets embroiled in a scandal with a cheerleader, um, which wouldn't be as much of a scandal because he's not married, but, you know, I mean, hey, whatever he wants to do. It's some, some kind of a scandal or starts getting hooked on painkillers or if he goes to the Vikings and it becomes like this personal thing, it's going to be a little bit ugly, but it might get ugly if he retires. He might go on Pat McAfee's show and air his grievances and the Packers suck, this, that, or the other. I don't know what's going to happen exactly, but all I know is, the you know, it's even now with like all the stuff that's going on. There's things that he says that I really like and agree with. There's things that he says that I really don't like and don't agree with, but um, it's it's kind of like anything else. You know, there's musicians that make great music that are a big part of my life growing up, and you come to find out they're a freaking low-life dirt bag with all, all kinds of horrible beliefs, but you know what? That doesn't change the fact that it really made a positive impression on my life growing up, and I still love the music, and I to some degree, appreciate the contributions that these people made to my life, even despite the fact that I may despise them as as individuals. But as artists, as football players, as whatever, as what they've contributed to my life, I'll always be eternally grateful for that. And, you know, this is just the next chapter. And this is the future. What, you know, it's, 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 the past is the past, and it's not going anywhere. It's not going to change. Nobody can ever change it. The future is the question, and the question is where do we go from here? We, we disregard the past entirely, and we ask the question, what is the best for right now and the future? And we answer that question. And the answer to that question is the best thing that could happen is Aaron Rodgers gets traded for maximum compensation because it helps our team now. I want to build more positive memories going forward, and the best way to do that is to trade Aaron Rodgers. I want more good memories. You know, I had uh, my son this morning has been asking me a lot of updates about it, and I was coming downstairs to... Uh, to do the podcast, and he said, um, "Dad was uh, was Aaron Rodgers Brett Favre's because because what had happened is um, my he kind of randomly my he was, my son was talking about Super Bowls and um, he said I've never seen the Packers win a Super Bowl and because uh, he was born in twenty I don't know doesn't matter <laughs> I'm gonna say a number that's very wrong but." I told him, I said, well, maybe Jordan Love will be your guy. And he kind of got a big smile and got all excited about it. And as I was going downstairs, he said, um, Dad, was was Aaron Rodgers uh, Brett Favre's backup before he played? And I said, yeah. And he said, how? He was so good. Like, how could Aaron Rodgers be a backup? Because he's such a good quarterback. And I just kind of smiled because it just, you know, he's kind of living the whole Brett Favre thing. I mean, it, I... It's not for me because I saw Brett Favre win, but if you were born in like 2000, somewhere in that range, this is very similar. You know, you saw Brett Favre play great. You saw that you, you've never seen them win a Super Bowl. You saw the transition, and it's just funny to, to hear him say that. Cause, and that's where his mind went when we transitioned to Jordan Love was, well, what about Rodgers? Was, was he in a similar situation? And all I could say is yes. And again, it's shocking. Like, how could somebody so good be a backup? I don't know, man. But but that's the thing. Like I'm, you know, it just kind of put a different perspective on it for me too. When I heard that, it's you know all the, the fighting that's going on on Twitter and whatnot. What I want again, going forward, is memories, not just for me, but for my son. All the people that are gleefully shouting, "Jordan Love's going to be a bust," and Gutekunst is terrible," and all these things are terrible, and yet declare at the same time that they want what's best for the team, as though clinging to Aaron Rodgers is somehow going to help my son have better memories of the Green Bay Packers. Somehow that's going to help him see a Super Bowl. It's not. It's not going to help him see anything. We're not going to win a Super Bowl if Rodgers comes back this year. Come on now. The same people that are screaming that he has no help, that Gutekunst is a complete loser, that there's no, you know, the reason we were so bad is because he doesn't have any weapons, then why should we bring him back? He still doesn't have any weapons. And we don't have any money to go in free agency and get all these elite free agents that you think are just floating around out there in order to make us contenders. So why bring him back? We're not going to win. We can't. It's physically impossible, according to you. Isn't that right? Even though Pat Mahomes can do it, after losing Tyreek Hill, he didn't make excuses. 
The Bills have one good wide receiver. Don't make excuses. They just go win. Nobody makes excuses about how the Buffalo Bills GM is a freaking joke because he doesn't go out and get him a second elite wide receiver. Tom Brady won a freaking Super Bowl with Danny Amendola. It was, who was it? It was Danny Amendola. Who's the other uh, speedy white guy they had, the little shifty guy, the more known guy? And then Martellus Bennett. They didn't even have Gronk. It was Martellus Bennett, Amendola, dang it, what is his name? Edelman. Amendola, Edelman, Martellus Bennett. That was the whole crew that won the Super Bowl. Guess who's not freaking pissing and moaning about, oh, he didn't have enough weapons. <laughs> Anybody know who their running back was? No, me either. Who cares? Nobody cares. They won because Tom Brady's freaking Tom Brady. Well, he had defenses too. Okay, well, let's keep moving the goalposts. So when we lost in the playoffs, despite the defense holding our opponent to single digits, what's the excuse? Well, he didn't have weapons. But he had a defense, didn't he? But again, that's your excuse. Unless we have a perfect team, Aaron Rodgers, the best quarterback of all time, he can't do it. He needs three elite wide receivers, an elite offensive line, elite running backs, and an elite defense. Otherwise, it's impossible for anybody to win and to expect Aaron Rodgers, the greatest of all time, to be able to overcome adversity without a perfect roster is impossible. It can't happen. Nobody's ever done it, except everybody does it every single year when they win the Super Bowl. But Rodgers can't be expected to do it despite the fact that he's the greatest of all time. But again, if that's the case, and Gutekunst is a complete joke, why bring him back? We don't have any new weapons, and maybe we draft one. Whoop-de-doo, who cares? All the other complaints are still there. Who's our tight end? What about guard and center? What about safety? What about the defense in general? You think the defense is going to be top five? Why? We thought that last year, and they were garbage, and Joe Barry's still here. And if he can't win without an elite defense, and we're not going to have an elite defense because Brian Gutekunst isn't inept and isn't able to get seven Hall of Famers in this draft class to play as rookies as as seven Hall of Famers, then what's the point in bringing Rodgers back? There is no point. We're not going to win with him. So why pay him? He'll be much better off with the Jets, who have, you know, three elite wide receivers, an elite offensive line, an elite running back, an elite defense. Most of that isn't true. But we'll just pretend it is because that's what we do. We pretend everybody else does everything right except the Packers. Everybody else has has top five wide receivers, right? 31 teams have three top five wide receivers. I don't know how that math checks out, but somehow in people's minds, that works. But the Packers, only one, right? Devontae, best wide receiver in football. Yeah, but the, the second wide receiver was only like the 34th best wide receiver in football. My favorite, I got into an argument, you can tell when I got into an argument with somebody because I get on a tirade, got into an argument with somebody on Twitter, and it devolved to the point where he said that all these other teams, the last three teams that won Super Bowls all had teams that had their GMs go out and get them a bunch of wide receivers. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? The Chiefs lost Tyreek Hill, and they're like, yeah, well, they went out and got MVS, Juju Smith-Schuster, and, and expended a second-round pick. Hilariously, he was blaming Gutekunst for using draft picks, but now that's a benefit. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Aaron Rodgers can't win with Devontae, MVS, and Lazard. But you're telling me that the Chiefs GM knocked it out of the park with Juju Smith-Schuster, MVS, the exact same guy, and Sky Moore, who is a punt returner that didn't even play wide receiver very much because he sucked so much and then got pulled from being a returner because he kept muffing the football. This isn't about... Aaron Rodgers. This is about you hate Brian Gutekunst and the guy can do no wrong and everybody else is a great GM despite the fact that they are significantly worse. And by the way, Mahomes was in a significantly worse situation than Aaron Rodgers. I'm sick of the freaking excuses. And look, maybe it's on Rodgers. Maybe it's on Matt LaFleur. I don't know. But I'm sick of Brian Gutekunst shoving players in here. We're getting scrubs off the street who become number one players in the NFL. We're getting Hall of Fame caliber players. We got an elite edge rusher, an elite corner. We have an elite left tackle. We have elite, 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 all over the team. Everywhere you look. Top this, top that. The fact that they're not coming together and the quarterback can't overcome jack squat is, 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 and then we're going to blame the GM as though everybody else has a better situation and it's just not true and I'm freaking sick of it and I'm tired of it so Aaron Rodgers can go play for the Jets and go fail over there because that team sucks and their roster sucks and it's not going to be any different but we're going to pretend that he's going to be loaded up with all these great weapons great he can go get loaded up over there we'll see how that pans out now that they don't have any picks 
or any cap space. I'm sure they're going to be just just firing on all cylinders, getting that guy a massive amount of help. We'll see how that pans out. But again, you know what I respect? Not freaking making lame excuses for why you can't succeed. I think it's pathetic. Don't make excuses. You've got Hall of Famers from top to bottom, and you want to blame the number three wide receiver? That's a freaking joke. We didn't win because our number three wide receiver isn't good enough? Oh my goodness. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you're here in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is not as uh, simple as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened up so many more doors. The show is called The The Deal. Deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Hey, Ryan. Dan from California. Hey. Man, I'm kind of worried. The uh, NFC North, like, seems like it knows what it's doing now, the... The Vikings GM acknowledged that their team is too old, something yep. we've been talking about for a long time, and they're tearing down and rebuilding. Like, what? Yeah, no, I I, I, I admire what they're doing. And, and to be honest, the Bears, too. The Bears did the exact same thing last year. They they acknowledged it in a, a year earlier. So as much as I talk crap, they're they're finally doing the right thing. But again, the question is, can they actually rebuild this? So the, the, the first step... They both knocked it out of the park, no question. And the Lions, by the way, same thing. They got a whole new regime in there. They seem to be heading in the right direction. Um, so I'm not immediately scared of the Vikings because this is the teardown phase. But you're right. They are they are finally doing the right things. Like That sounds like confidence to me. Yeah. And the Bears? The Bears are stack and picked and yep. playing and trying to get a bunch of, you know, B level players to just fill their roster so eventually they can draft a quarterback in three, four years. <laughs> right. See what I did there? I get it. Um, I like it. And the Lions are, you know, we've already seen they've been doing this for the last two years. So, yep. Man, this is interesting. We'll see. I don't know. I don't think this year, but maybe next year, the, you know, the NFC North could be the best division in the NFC, I think. Just these guys are all rebuilding and. It sucks because it sounds like they're these guys are doing it right. Yeah. Let me know what you're thinking. Go back up. Yeah, well, we'll find out. You know, um, this is where this is where the rubber meets the road, right? Anybody can tear down a house, but building it's a different a different deal. You know, you can hire me to tear down your house. I'll do it. I might kill myself in the process, but um, I couldn't build it again. So this is the easy part. Uh, again, kudos to them for acknowledging. And, and, and it makes sense, right? If you're the new regime, you look at what the old team built, they did a bad job. If, if the ownership wants you to keep things the way that they are, don't take the job, right? I mean, if, if that, that should be contingent on taking the job. Is, look, here, here's the bottom line. This team is not built the right way. You've acknowledged that by firing the former GM. I need patience from you because I'm going to need to dismantle this and rebuild it in a, in a much better way. And uh, if you're if you're hiring me, it's because you trust that I can do that the right way. So again, both teams going in the right direction. The question though is, when the rubber meets the road, can you build that team? And ultimately, the the biggest thing, can you find the quarterback? Right, at least a good enough quarterback. You know, I don't I don't know exactly what they're building. 
some teams don't exactly have like the guy. You know, the Eagles, I don't I mean, I mean, they got the guy. Don't get me wrong. Jalen Hurts seems phenomenal, but Jalen Hurts is not Patrick Mahomes. But he doesn't need to be because that thing just works. Now, I don't know for how long, once you pay that guy and you start losing guys like Kelsey and some of those defensive pieces, which they already are, that's when that's when things might get a little bit tough. And and that's when we'll see what Jalen Hurts can be. Maybe he can be, you know, a, a top three guy even without that. I don't know. He's still very young, still learning, and and uh, who knows what his ceiling is. But those are the important pieces. And, um, you know, I mean, for the Bears, Justin Fields is a big question mark, although I don't think that they have any any qualms about him. If he has a bad year, not only is the GM probably going to be ready to move on, but I think the fans will be too. Uh, they're they're going to stand behind him because, you know, oh, he doesn't have any pieces. He doesn't have that, which by the way, the Bears actually have a legitimate complaint. Their offensive line actually is terrible. The wide receivers actually were terrible. Everything was terrible, but so was Justin Fields. But you st- again, you still have to be able to build. And just similar to the Lions too, you got to do it kind of quick because you get to the point where the Lions are. And my whole thing with them is now you're getting to the point because early on, you're kind of tearing everything down. You're just adding. You got so much money. You have so many picks. You can add at a fever pitch. You're not losing anybody because you just added them within this year or the last year. But now you're starting to see guys getting to the end of their contracts. They're starting to leave. And so now you're adding at about the same pace that you're losing. And so now you have to be twice as good as you were before. Because not only do you need to, because if you just add players that are just as good as the ones that are leaving, you stay exactly where you are. And where you are is a team that can't make the playoffs. So you have to hit at twice the rate or at least at a higher rate then you're losing. And there's also just decline in play, right? So your coaching has to be on point to be able to make sure that the increase in play from guys going from what year one to year two and year two to year three is at least at pace or better than the guys who are going from year five to six and six to seven that are getting worse. So, I mean, there's, there's a, a constant purging and decline that's going on. And, and you really have to be on top of your game. You know, it's that whole saying where if you're staying still, you're going backwards. And that's really true in the NFL. You have to add and add a lot of talent and do it really fast and be able to manage a salary cap because once they get good, they're like, all right, I want all your money. And it's like, well, crap, so does everybody else, dude. So you got to manage all that. That's the other thing. I mean, again, the NFL is built for parity. Once you get good, it get, the, the better you are, the harder it is to get better. And I think that's part of the problem the Packers have had. They've never had really high picks. They've never really had a lot of money. And again, I hate to go back on the old diatribe, but you know, you, you can't really compare what the Eagles are doing as far as adding pieces and what the Packers are doing. You know, I mean, the Packers added a massive amount of talent that first year when they had a bunch of money. Now that they have no money, and I mean, this year they're going to have some picks, which is great. And, and the expectation should be higher, especially if we get pick 13. I mean, if we get 13 and 15 and don't get anything from that, that's a problem. But I mean, you know, Ted Thompson, granted, toward the end, I mean, things were getting pretty rough, but I mean, we never had any real money. Because we're paying everybody. We got so many stars everywhere that are taking all of our money. Some of them maybe shouldn't have been, but Clay's getting paid. Perry's getting play, paid. Rodgers getting paid. The offensive line's getting paid. We got corners getting paid. We got wide receivers getting paid. Jordy's getting paid. We're getting Jimmy Graham. Again, some of the contracts were bad, but you know that's the thing. You get so many stars, you pay them all. You don't have any money. We already have the stars, right? So it gets to be harder to even maintain at the rate that you're going to be losing. So again, these are the challenges that these teams are going to face down the road. This is just step one, and they pass the test. I mean, it should be blatantly obvious. Shockingly, it's not to a lot of GMs. They come in and they're like, all right, let's see if we can steer this garbage ship. Dude, you you need to tear this thing down. So they got step one down. That's the easy part. Now you got to build. Um, and so far, I'm I'm... I shouldn't say I'm not impressed with the Bears. Let's see how it goes. I don't understand the linebacker thing. That completely confuses me. Also, the recruiting has been terrible. I went through that yesterday on Packernet it after dark. Nobody's going to the Bears. They got a guard and two linebackers. The wide receiver they got in a trade, that wasn't up to the wide receiver. If he was a free agent, you think he'd have gone there? Maybe. I don't know, but probably not. That's going to be a problem, you know? And, and it's, it's sort of a self-perpetuating problem, too, because a lot of people probably don't want to go there because you're bad. And you're bad because nobody wants to go there. So you got a challenge to try to to spark something to prove that, hey, this is a place you want to be. And it's tough to do that at this point because the Bears are a joke. And they have been for a long time. The reputation is not great. And you don't have a proven track record. And you don't have a proven anything. And your quarterback looks like a disaster. And the weather sucks. And everything. I mean, it's just, it's, it's not a desirable location. And time after time after time, you see all these guys getting signed and they're not going to Chicago. And that's where all the money is. They have all the money in the world to offer these guys everything they could possibly want. 
and they're not going there. And the fact of the matter is there's not very many big swings left. Most of the the big name guys, they're gone. You know, again, you look at pass rushers, what's left? Yannick Ngakwe? That's terrible. That was terrible, what, three years ago when the Vikings got him? It was a joke. So, again, we shall see. Um, so far, kind of kind of mid, in my opinion, right? They did the easy thing. I haven't seen a ton of moves. The I, I'll tell you the one that, that really kind of scares me is um, the Saints pass rusher, Marcus Davenport. He got off to kind of a slow start, took him a couple years to kind of get going, which was expected. I think he was seen as a project. I don't know what he's done exactly super recently, but I know that that dude was dominant. I think it's more of a 4-3 thing over there, which is weird because I thought they were going to a 3-4. I don't know, but 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 that dude's pretty, he, he's kind of a dog. And if they lose to Darius and, and pick up Davenport, that's, uh, you know, bias and all. I'm just going to say, in, 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 until further investigation proves me otherwise, I think that was a big pickup. In fact, I want to see what they signed him for. One year, $13 million. That's surprising. I mean, everything about this, there must be something wrong with Davenport. Because I don't know why the Vikings would let him go. It's not that much money. I don't know. I must just be wrong. I, 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 again, I know he had at least a couple of years where he was riding high. But maybe that's maybe he fell off. I have no idea. But that one that one scared me a little bit when I saw that. Like, holy crap! I didn't even know he was an option. Hey, Pack Papa. Hey, man. Uh, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Uh, these last uh, couple days, I've been uh, watching a lot of Jets live streams on YouTube. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> these people are going crazy at the thought of getting Aaron Rodgers, which I don't blame them for, but right. their sheer willingness and happiness to sign 10% of their active roster based on Aaron Rodgers' wants for over-the-hill players or his buddies. I mean, Lazard, it's only $22 million guaranteed, but... I will say, I appreciate you saying that because I think something I need to do is go find this and just kind of pump up that whole narrative because some people don't buy it. Like, oh, the, the Jets fans don't, they haven't been promised anything. They don't, dude, okay. I got, I'll, I'll poke around, see what I can find. How many third down slants you need to drop to get 30 million guaranteed? <laughs> um, but moving on to the fans, there a couple of things I've noticed. They're going to be over the moon excited if they don't have to give up pick 13. Yeah. Any pick 13 is what they're expecting to have to get up plus more. Um, additionally, they think there's no way in hell that uh, Elijah Moore is going to be part of the deal. Okay. One of them has made a funny comment that he would just tell the flirt to go f- himself with his brother or something. Um, just a couple of notes. It's probably um, true. It's not a part of the deal. We, as a fan base, are extremely fortunate yes uh to be the, in the position we're in yep so i i don't know if your fan base if, if you're dejected about what's happening go watch the jets go find a jet stream and watch them and just see how happy they're going to be to get a player for a year or two that we've been able to watch for 15 years right and they keep going back to 2008 people talking about our last quarterback okay look forward Appreciate love going ahead, and we'll be fine. All right. Thanks, Papa. <laughs> Call back from what? All right, dude. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's I think that's entirely true. And and it's funny because it doesn't have to be sort of one of those one of the other things where it's like, well, look, the Jets fans are so excited, and it's because we are stupid and we don't understand what we have, and we should be wanting them to just the way they want them. Not necessarily. We're different franchises in different phases of our of where we're at. I think the Jets are doing something stupid. I really do. I don't think anyone should pay that much money for one year of a guy that played like he played last year, especially considering it's a whole new thing or whatever. The, the odds of him being able to get in sync with that offensive line, the coaching staff, the, the wide receivers, the tight ends, the running backs, all that stuff, it's very low, and it's not worth that money. And it's not how you build a franchise. It's not, I mean, that should be everybody's goal is how do we build a franchise, not for this year, but for many years. But you know what? I kind of understand it from the Jets standpoint because they've just never had it. And the the ownership is looking at it like, I just want to give my fans something. Even if it's just for a year, let's just give them something. And that's a different experience. We are not that. We do have higher standards as a fan base, and that's a good thing. 
you know, it's one thing to say you shouldn't be spoiled, and that's true. It's another thing to say that we should just be grateful to have some kind of mid-season and just kind of tear this thing apart or whatever, whatever kind of weird thought. Again, I, I, I don't want that. One year of, of just being maybe playoff contenders. Like, that's not what we want. That's not our goal. Our goal is to be a freaking dynasty, to, to be the great. That's what everybody's goal should be. How can we be the greatest? And um, it starts with with moving on from, from Aaron Rodgers because he's not the future. He knows that. Everybody knows that. He said he was 90% ready to retire this year. It's it's That era is done. It's come to its conclusion. And, um, you know, it's time to see if, Aaron, if if Jordan Love is that guy. And if he's not, that's fine. We move on. That's, that's the thing I think a lot of these people on, on the Rodgers uh, side of things refuse to understand because I, I just saw it today on Twitter. I had to refrain from arguing because it was on somebody else's comment thread or whatever, and I'm doing too much arguing as it is. But I keep seeing this thing where it's like the belief that everybody believes that Jordan Love is so good and we're going to be so much better without. And, and maybe that's true, and I think it's entirely possible, but that's not the point. It's not about which is better, certainly not th- this year. It's about building for the next five years, 10 years, building for the future. That's what it's about. How can we be what the Patriots were for 20 years? How can we be what the Packers were for 15 years with Aaron Rodgers? How can we do that again? Unless Rodgers wants to play until he's 60, I don't see that happening. So we got to figure out what that looks like. We've got a young, talented, hungry team. We've got some holes to fix, but we got to figure it out. We got to figure out what is our scheme, what is our plan, what is our identity, how do we play, what do we do moving forward? And and the answer to that question isn't let's keep Aaron Rodgers. I think it's entirely short-sighted to look at it and say, "Well, I think we're probably better with Rodgers this year, therefore that's the right answer." It's insane. That's what Mike Silver was talking about the other day. Like, this isn't win-win. This is win-lose because the Jets got better and the Packers got worse. First of all, to, to, to think that it's impossible the Packers can replicate what we did last year with Jordan Love is insane. We were not a good football team last year. Okay? Second of all, the short-sightedness is unbelievable to me. Even for a guy like Silver, who's like, you know, a big wig freaking reporter or whatever he is, I don't know. Um, to to have that level of short sightedness, to pretend we're going to disregard any relevance of the future or team building or anything like that, we're going to disregard the contract, we're going to disregard 2022 and everything else that's going on, the interdynamics of the locker room and the relationship between Rodgers and the, the the GM and the coach and all that stuff. We're going to disregard everything and simply look at it and say the Packers would probably, probably be better off this year with Rodgers than Love. Therefore, this is a bad move for the Packers. That is such a stupid, unbelievably stupid thing to say. Because it's, it's, it's such an incomplete assessment of the situation. How can you do a full assessment of the right thing to do in this situation without assessing anything beyond 2023 and without looking at contracts, salary cap, any of that? You're trying to be blind. And again, we're, we're just in different situations. For the Jets, even though, I, again, I don't think it's the right thing to do. I think you should have set a higher standard. But when you've been so bad for so long, you know what? Even if this sets us back a couple years, dude, we've been set back forever. To have the opportunity to have a guy that could maybe be MVP of the league, even maybe, even if it's a 10% chance, we're willing to do that because we just want to see it for a year. Yeah, we're going to suck the year after that because our salary cap is destroyed and we still don't have a quarterback and we don't have any picks because we gave them to the Packers and we gave away players to the Packers and we're a complete freaking joke and a disaster and we're horrible and Zach Wilson's still here and this is the worst situation ever. But we had that one year, and we'll always have that one year. And good for you. If that's your thing, if that's what you want, if you just want a little taste, fine. But we're not them. We're not the Jets. And I don't have those standards. That's not how I think. I don't care if we suck. I just want a taste. No, I'm, I'm, I want to transition to something great. That is my expectation as a Packer fan. That is the organization's expectation, and it should be. I don't want an owner that says, let's just forget the whole thing where we're actually a good football team, and let's just see if for one year we can sneak into the playoffs just once. 
That's not my standard. That's not your standard. That shouldn't be any of our standards. We've seen playoffs. And I expect to get into the playoffs again with Jordan Love. And if we don't, we didn't meet expectations. And we got to figure out why and we got to change it. Maybe Matt LaFleur is the problem. Maybe Jordan Love's not the answer. Maybe we, you know, we, we, maybe, maybe good, you know, again, if Gutekunst stuff, that if this draft class doesn't pan out from last year, you know, Devontae Wyatt doesn't take a step, Quay's still a disaster, Romeo Dobbs maybe isn't quite what we thought he was going to be, and really it's just kind of Christian Watson who's pretty good and, and that's it. And then we miss on pick 13 and 15. Yeah, maybe it's time to start having that discussion. He's great in free agency, but he can't draft. And maybe we switch things around organizationally. Maybe we replace him entirely. I don't know. But we'll figure that out when we get there. But one thing we know for sure is that Aaron Rodgers is a massive piece, and he is a massive obstruction to us moving in that direction. We can't move on with our new quarterback. We can't move on salary cap-wise. We can't move on scheme-wise because he controls all that. He controls what players are in the building, how we, how we coach, what, what plays we call, how we do everything. I mean, the, the salary cap, every single thing revolves around this guy, and we cannot move forward until we make this adjustment. So we need to make the adjustment. We need to go through this year and, and reassess things. How did it look? Where's Jordan? How did the scheme look? How did the players look? All that. But we cannot do that until this. This is like we talked about with the, the Bears and, and the, the Vikings. They finally did the right thing and tore it down. Now we got to see if they can build. Same thing. We moved Aaron Rodgers. Now we got to win without him. And to say that we can't win without him is a freaking joke. You know what? There's 31 other teams that have found ways to win football games without Aaron Rodgers. So unless we think the Packers are just the most inept organization in the history of the universe, for no reason whatsoever, other than I worship Aaron Rodgers and I hate everything else that exists aside from him, um, I think we should set a standard that's a little higher that says it is possible to win without Aaron Rodgers. Those pieces exist. If we need a new coach, new GM, new quarterback, new wide receivers, new offensive line, whatever, we'll figure it out. But we're not going to figure it out until we move on from Aaron Rodgers, which has to happen. So this, for us, just like the Bears and Vikings, is step one. Now we move on and see if we can handle step two and three and four and five and six. Hey, this is... Uh... Kind of disappointed, by the way. We're still Wednesday at seven in the morning, so I apologize. It doesn't look like we're going to get to anything post-announcement. Uh, this is for all the Rodgers apologists and defenders and all his stands. I just want to know if you guys are at all sick of the situation and, and and if he's reached that limit yet because I know a lot of you uh, on Twitter said he can have all the time in the world. He deserves to have some time to make a decision. Well, we're in free agency now. And that seemed to be the cutoff that a lot of you told me, at least, was kind of the date when uh, when you said he, he should have a decision by by free agency. He's going to have one before free agency, blah, blah, blah. He didn't. So uh, so I, I got to know because I know that there's a lot of you listening out there right now, and I know there's even some in the <clears throat> Packernet crew. Uh, no no names thrown out, but Come I know on, that there's some nice. defenders and apologists around there. What's the deal? Are you, uh, are you pissed yet? Because I'm about ready to drive down there and smack a decision right out of him. Um, so... Aaron Rodgers, uh, f- his stupid hippie attitude, uh, and I, I, yeah, yeah, I hope he gets a f-ing hemorrhoid. Go back, go. I get it. And again, according to Rodgers, none of that is actually true. He gave his in, his thing on Friday, but everybody knows that at this point. I, I, I will say one thing here, though. Just as far as boundaries for the show goes, there's almost no rules whatsoever, and you can call in and say whatever you want about me, and I will probably play it, depending on how crazy it gets. But when I say that I very rarely skip calls, I have skipped a couple, and I can tell you that I'm pretty sure 100% of the skipped calls have been when other co-hosts get attacked. So, Nate, you're toeing the line a little bit, and I think I kind of decided to play it just so we can lay out the ground rules. So... You can come at me, that's fine, but let's not get personal with other stuff. Let's let's not talk about other callers. Let's not talk about other co-hosts. At the end of the day, these are all my people, right? Everybody that does the podcast does it because I want their contribution. I appreciate all the work that they do for me, for my family. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a game. And there are things that are bigger than football, and those things are people. So let's be nice to the other callers, respectful. 
And let's try to be respectful of, again, all the other hosts um, generally. You know, I mean, it, it, it's a broad, I'm casting a broad net here. I mean, I'm just, just in general, because I'm sure there's loopholes that I'm leaving out there. Let's try to be respectful of other people. And I know I toe that line sometimes too. I'm talking about people on Twitter and whatnot that I get into arguments with. And I know some of you hold those views or whatever, so it sounds like I'm talking about you. I'm trying to be direct in my opinion, but vague at the same time. I don't mean to attack anybody. I just want to be very specific about exactly how I feel about things. But again, let's not cross that line. That is the one official line that I have on this show. And again, you can call in and say it, but it's just not going to get played. But uh, let's, we got so many calls. Let's uh, keep squeezing a few in here. Hey, it's Nate. Um, I've been hearing a lot of the uh, the New York discussions, and I just got to say, New York. Okay. I, why, why is that? Why is that place known as the greatest city on the planet? I'm not sure. Absolutely Haven't not. Because you have a bunch of, you have more buildings and more people packed in a small area. I fucking hate people. Yeah. Do you know how many other people like me also hate people? Yeah, that's, I, I think, and that's the thing, like, there's just different, just like, there's different kinds of pizza, there's a lot of different kinds of people, and people like me, and apparently people like Nate, cannot fathom living in a city like New York. There's freaking people everywhere, aside from the fact that it's unbelievably expensive, aside from the fact that there is a massive amount of crime. There's people everywhere. Like, I, I'm, 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 I get a small space to live in. When I go outside of my unbelievably expensive apartment, there's people all around in my apartment building. And then I walk outside and there's people everywhere. It's so crowded. I can't get away from anybody. Why, why would you want that? I don't understand it. And I'm sure people in the city have no idea why I'd like to get away from people. I'm, I'm in a pretty small town right now. And I, I, I moved out to kind of get away from the city a little bit. So we're kind of on the outskirts. And uh, we're still in a suburb and, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't even like this. I want to get further away because then you get into the small towns and everybody gets nitpicky. The only good thing about a city, nobody gives a crap. You do whatever you want. And unless you're like shooting guns in your apartment, nobody's going to say anything to you. I learned that in Madison. Like it's, it, we care about big stuff. We got too many big things to worry about little things. Then you move out to the suburbs and everybody nitpicks the little things. Who's putting their garbage cans four inches from the mail? But you know, the mail lady can't get the mail. <laughs> Why are you staring out your window with binoculars? Mind your freaking business, Marge. There's no Marge here. I'm just saying in general, everybody's so freaking nosy. But I just, I want to get further away and just be like, you know what? I'm going to get my area over here where nobody can see me. Mind your own freaking business. Good Lord. The only reason I'd like to be close to anything is better food and stuff. But now, now, apparently, I can just order food online between Amazon and everything else. Pretty soon, you click a button, your groceries show up on a freaking helicopter, and I don't have to deal with anything or anyone. I don't have to go into work because everything's done online. Just live out in the middle of nowhere, man. I get it. I get it. Go on. Why would I want to be around more of them? No, why, no. why would I want that? I No part of me wants that whatsoever. Right. Um, I get it. I, I would never, ever want to live in New York. That place, the city that never sleeps. I love sleeping. Dude, I sleeping don't want to live dope. in an area that's loud. Right. So lots loud. of people. And like hardly any trees at all unless you go it's like, all cement. up north. It, or, that's the other thing. Everybody's all like, we love nature. And, you know, I mean, that's more California. But still, you get a little bit more of that like hippie, natural nature stuff. Dude, there's no nature. The only nature is in the parks where all the crime happens, where the homeless people are shooting up heroin and stabbing people. Like, that's your only nature. Everything else is cement. It's brick buildings on top of cement. It's terrible. Something, and then a lot of people say that's not really New York. Just that place. No, all suck. I hate, I hate every person that I meet that's from New York. No, I swear. I, little, I've met, you know, probably 10 people in real life <laughs> okay. uh, from New York, and every one of them suck in their own way. <laughs> And I'm not sorry about it. So maybe I just haven't met the right people. I don't know. But New York. Yeah, I mean, again, it's a, it's a. I I don't think I've met ten people from New York. Um, New York City is is obviously what we're both talking about. New York is a huge state. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm just I'm not that person. I don't I don't understand. I hate I hated driving into the city when I had to go there for school. Um, went to MATC for a couple of years, and I hated it absolutely freaking hated it. I hated parking there. I remember I, I parked and once in a while, like it would be around the time the school bus would drop you and they'd get off the bus and they just start fighting. 
these girls would get off the bus and it was like this whole like, what are you say about my mama? They just start swinging. Like, what is that? Everything's covered in garbage. They had this like field, which is again, like the only nature you're going to find. And really all it is, is a plot of land that used to have a building and they don't know what to do with it anymore. But it would just grow like 10 feet tall in grass. It was just a disaster. And eventually they'd come through and cut it. And you know what happened when they cut it down? It's all garbage. They just throw their garbage outside the wind. Like it's just the streets are lined with garbage. People just throw garbage out of their cars. It's trash. It's crowded. The people are rude. You know, you know what else happened that drove me nuts? Nobody ever would walk on the correct side. When you're walking, it's no different than driving. Stay on the right side. Pass me on my left. Nobody would do, everybody just walks wherever they want and they're on their phone and they're constantly walking on the left and there were so many people, I'm serious, I walked right into them and I was staring at them when I did it because I'm not moving. Go stand over there, you moron. And they would not, they, nobody would, everybody, it was like they did it on purpose. Everybody walked on the left just to be a douche. Just like, why do you throw your garbage in the street? Because you suck. Why are you fighting all the time? Why is there so much crime and all the break-ins? car break-ins. Good thing I had a piece of garbage car with nothing in it. There's no reason to, nobody would even think of breaking into my car. I had a Toyota Echo. Roll down windows, the whole nine yards, dude. It was, it was a good car and all, but nobody's going to break into that piece of crap. Good thing. It's horrible. Take the bus in there and the people on the bus are just, they suck. Everybody's mean. Why would you want that to be? I don't get it. Why is that? Why do you want to be? And then it's expensive. Leave. That's the other thing I don't get. Like, people that are like, oh, it's, I'm, I'm a victim because I live in the city and there's so much crime. Leave. Get out of there. Go live in the middle of nowhere. Get this cheap, dumpy apartment. Because you live in a piece of garbage anyways. Go get a piece of garbage out in the middle of the country. Get away from all this. Get a job working a farm somewhere. Get up at like four in the morning. Go do whatever it is farm people do. Milk a cow. I don't know. Make a little bit of money. And uh, get away from it all. What are you doing? To get out of there. Go move to the suburbs and get a job at Walmart or something. I don't know. I, don't, I just, I don't understand the desire to be in the city. Maybe somebody should, that's in the city should call in and explain from your perspective. Like, what, what is it? I mean, I, I, I don't get the impression that you like people. People in New York seem to hate people. But you're surrounded by people. Why don't you want to get away from the people? And the crime and the high price. I mean, I get it if you've got like this big, massive jet. Like, I don't want to live in the city, but I get paid like, you know, 300 grand to be working in this place and I have to be here in person. All right, that's fair enough. Got to do what you got to do. But there are people making not super great money living in places like Chicago and New York and LA and everything. It's like, dude, get out of there. What are you doing to yourself? But people like the city. I don't know. It's a whole nightlife thing, I guess. I mean, you got clubs or whatever. And again, good food, but then you're just going to be poor. Is it, is it like a status thing? And I think that's what upsets people like Nate and myself and Jersey Mike is the feeling that because I moved here and because I like dress in nice clothes and I like get my hair styled at a salon and because I go to fancy restaurants and eat fancy food, somehow that puts me at a status above you because I want to live in like a class system, you know, like a caste system almost, where I can like put myself in a higher status and look at you as like a plebe. If that is your desire, don't call in because that's not something you want to admit. But um, yeah, that's unfortunate. If you have to live in a garbage area and spend way too much money on stupid stuff. That doesn't matter. Just so you get this feeling of superiority to other people. It's a weird thing. I'm just, I'm just theorizing. I don't know. But I do know that's the thing. Usually when people leave Wisconsin and go to New York, they have this like, oh, I left. I left those backwoods people with their traditional values. Oh, tell me about it. I used to live there. Oh. It's so obnoxious. Not naming names, but there are people that are you know, kind of like in this whole Packers community that have done that stuff. And it's, it just, your eyes roll back so hard, it freaking hurts. I'm watching my brain, the neurons in my brain firing. My eyes are so far back in my head. Anyway, should we do another one? I guess we, we, we really got to keep going. And it's Nate, so we might as well just keep rocking with the Nate thing. Nate, when he goes on his tirades, it's like, uh, there's always like two or three in a row. Hey, it's Nate. Hey, um, man. just finished, uh, the Packer Night After Dark from yesterday. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to, uh, call in and, and, uh, I do have to give a little bit of, uh, of, of insight from my wife's side and from a few of my friends' side for the Jurassic Park thing. All so right, let's go. Jurassic Park, the horror movie. Um, I know you had kind of mentioned the thriller side of things, like sometimes things aren't horror movies, they're thrillers. Um, which is 100% true. Uh, but I do have to say, 
that sometimes things are classified in the thriller category only because people are shooting for awards uh, for their movie. Good example of that is Silence of the Lambs, uh, not classified as a horror movie. But I would still classify that as a horror movie. And I think most people that see that movie would probably classify it as a horror movie. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's... it's... It is kind of interesting because I never really thought about it being so nuanced, but I could maybe see an argument that it's not. Um, I don't know. See, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's different than Jurassic Park, but I don't know. I don't know if that really falls exactly into the horror category for me. I mean, I, I mentioned this, this movie that I just watched. It's actually kind of similar as far as the category of Silence of the Lambs. With the Ildris Ilba guy, or however you say his name. And it, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, it, it, there's a serial killer plot, and there's some creepy stuff in there. Like this guy, at one point, he like puts on this mask. So so I, I, I shouldn't ruin it for you, but I'll, I'll do it anyways. It doesn't really ruin it. It's just one scene. But these um, people had all gone missing, right? And, and he's got this weird thing where he like freezes the bodies and then kind of unveils them. So somebody that went missing like five years ago, all of a sudden their their body is found. And he did this thing where sent uh, he would send like audio of them being killed to the person's phone so they could hear it happening or whatever. But um, there's this one scene where apparently they had called all these people who had been looking for their loved one. And they all come rushing to this house. And they come in and they see all their loved ones hanging in this room. And then they light the room on fire. This guy lights the room on fire, whatever, somehow mechanically or whatever. It's all like... Uh, hacker type stuff so there's this whole network whatever but anyways the guy goes in and he wears this this mask and he bangs on the window so they they can see him from out the window as they're trying to get out of this room and like their loved one who they just found is lighting on fire and there's nothing they can do about it it's pretty messed up but then on this guy's mask is like a creepy face and then it switches over to their loved one's face and then it switches back and it's just this whole thing i don't think that was a horror movie it was kind of more of a thriller like suspenseful, like who done it? You know, when it, whenever the police are trying to track down the serial killer type thing, I don't really see that as a horror movie. I don't think Silence of the Lambs is, in my opinion. It's a it's a really good movie. It's got scary elements. I just I don't think so. I don't know. Other people could call in and, and let you let me know if you think that that's a horror. I I don't think I would put it in that category. Horror movie. Um. So uh, again, I, I just uh, I know you already gave your take. This is more for like anybody else listening if they want to call in. You know, honest opinion. Do you think Jurassic Park is a horror movie? Uh, yeah, go back, go. Yeah, again, I Jurassic Park is a no for me, and I think Silence of the Lambs honestly is a no for me. So let me talk to my robots. I got three different robots now. I, I, I just amass robots. Here's some of the answers that it gave. My question was, why is Silence of the Lambs not classified as a horror? Uh, it says, the Silence of the Lambs is not classified as a horror movie because it's a different style of horror movie from what people traditionally expect from the genre. Unlike villains such as Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees, Hannibal Lecter isn't a traditional killer with supernatural abilities. Instead, he was an unnerving and scary, and scary due to his psychology. The movie is more of a psychological thriller than a horror movie. The other one says, The Silence of the Lambs is classified as a psychological thriller, not a horror film, because it relies less on supernatural elements and more on suspense and thrill-seeking. It is also considered a crime drama because of its focus on... Est- and that's kind of how I see it, is more of a crime drama, with, with thriller, you know, psychological, whatever, elements. Crime drama because of its focus on FBI's investigation of a serial killer. While it does have elements of horror, such as suspense, suspenseful music, and a few jump scares, those elements are not what define the film as a whole. And then finally, we got a super in-depth answer here. The Silence of the Lambs is often classified as a psychological thriller rather than a horror movie, although it does contain elements of horror. There are several reasons for this classification. One, focus on crime. While The Silence of the Lambs contains some frightening and disturbing scenes, its primary focus is on the investigation of a serial killer and the efforts of FBI agent Clary Starling to catch him. The movie is more about crime solving and investigating than about horror. Two, a lack of supernatural elements. Horror movies often feature supernatural elements such as ghosts, monsters, and demons. The Silence of the Lambs, on the other hand, has no supernatural elements. Instead, the movie's horror stems from a realistic portrayal of a serial killer, Buffalo Bill's heinous crimes. Three, psychological thriller elements. The Silence of the Lambs is often classified as a psychological thriller because it explores the psyche of the of its characters, particularly that of the brilliant, manipulative, and cannibalistic psych, uh, psychiatrist Dr. Hannibal Lecter. The movie focuses on the psychological tension between characters rather than relying on jump scares and gore to create horror. 
Overall, The Silence of the Lambs is a complex, multi-layered movie that defies easy categorization. While it does contain elements of horror, it is primarily a psychological thriller that explores the depths of human depravity and the struggle of good against evil. And again, I generally would agree more with that. I don't see it as a horror movie. You know who we should be asking about this? Dusty. Dusty's our horror guy. We got to get Dusty in on this. I'm going to tag him on Twitter and see what he says. Actually, maybe I'll DM him and see if I can get him to call in. We'll see. It's a busy guy. He's got a lot of stuff going on. Anyways, I do have to leave it there. I'd love to get through some more. I do have some time, but we're at, you know, hour and a quarter, so we should probably wrap it up. You guys have yourselves a great night, and tomorrow we should be getting kind of close to, uh, you know, his announcement and whatnot. We've got a handful of calls prior to, but otherwise uh, we'll see. So you guys have a good rest of your day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.